Okay, everyone. So uh, thank you very much for uh, logging in to this webinar on Lean Teams. Over the course of the next 25 to 30 minutes, I will be talking to you about the whole concept behind this phrase and um, what uh, role it plays in the kind of business environment that we're facing today and what role each of us as an employee and as a team leader uh, we might have to play to help our organizations succeed. So let me kick this off, first of all, with a very brief kind of, over, an, of an overview of my background and why um, I might be able to contribute to your understanding of lean teams. So I have been leading teams now for many years in many different capacities in several different industries. I have built teams from scratch. I have led other teams that were led before me, and then I've helped those teams grow. And in all of these um, instances, I have helped develop a lean team that has gone on to contribute to the organization in a big way. And I am going to today uh, give you a very uh, quick glimpse of what it means to be a part of a lean team. A couple of administrative things. If you have a question, please go ahead and put it in the chat window. And otherwise, if you, uh, let's say, wanted to get more information about something, um, and, and let's say it's, uh, it's not addressed in these questions, then I will give you access to more resources by the time we're ending this session. So here's the agenda. Here are the three or four points that I want to talk to you about. First of all, I'm going to be talking to you about VUCA and the need for business agility, what it means uh, to have uh, a running business in a VUCA environment. First of all, what VUCA means. Uh, secondly, uh, what does lean mean in this context? And if you are familiar with lean, then what does it mean to have an anti-fragile team? Uh, thirdly, we'll talk about tools. What are some of the tools that we have available that will help us develop lean teams? So these are three areas that I will be touching upon uh, over the course of this webinar. First of all, VUCA. So VUCA, as many of you already know, uh, the V-U-C-A, it's an acronym for Volatile, Uncertain, Complex, and Ambiguous. And it's a description of the kind of environment in which we do our work and how over a period of time, we're noticing that the business environment is becoming more and more VUCA. That's the way this phrase is used. Because the environment around an organization is changing rapidly, and I think you will attest to the fact that there's a lot of fear about the economy, not just in this country, but globally. There is a lot of concern about political uncertainty with many um, conflicts going on in the world. Uh, there are challenges with the supply chain, uh, especially after COVID. And then the whole climate change scenario uh, that is now manifesting itself is bringing up additional challenges, which means the way we used to do business and we considered that acceptable, uh, that is not uh, how business is going to be done in the future. Because any business that you know continues to operate the way they used to operate before will run into difficulties and will most likely fail. That's the challenge. And there's some rapid changes needed. VUCA is here to stay. That is, uh, there's a consensus on this point. So what do you and I do in order to make sure that the, the, the organizations that we work for, the businesses that we work for, those businesses actually continue to function and continue to do well? And for that, those changes that are needed, let's talk briefly about what kind of changes we're talking about. Today, you offer a product and there's a particular type of customer that buys that product and pays you money for it. That's how your business runs. That may not be true in the future. Either that customer may no longer be interested afterwards or second possibility, the, the availability of that product might become challenging. Similarly, you might have some, uh, you might have some processes and systems that have been uh, working for you up until now, but that does not necessarily mean that those same processes and systems will continue to work afterwards. One example is we used to function a certain way and then COVID hit, and then everything changed. And there's no guarantee that something like COVID, and God forbid, but something like COVID may not once again turn up. Um, similarly, the, the kind of political difficulties people face sometimes make it impossible for us to get our products to customers on time, for our staff to get to the office on time. So all of those require changes in processes and systems. 
The third area is the structure, the structure of the organization. That structure will also probably need to change, will need to be modified. We have a very, typically, we have a very hierarchical structure. Um, three or four or five people report into one person and then that person, let's say the manager, is one among four or five managers and they report to one general manager and four or five general managers report to one director and that's how this pyramid goes up. But that structure has proven to be challenging in a rapidly changing scenario because the decisions that need to be made in the field require attention from the very top of the organization on a daily basis not always possible, which means there's a need for change. There's a need to, to be more flexible. How do we make our, our organizations flexible? That is the challenge that lean teams answer. So that flexibility of the organization, the term we use for it is agility, for the organization to become more agile, for it to move, change direction, uh, ch change its size, change the nature of the products, uh, change its structure, change its processes, change the time that it takes to make something and deliver it, and make all of those changes very, very quickly, far quicker than the competitors can, and quick enough for the customer to stay engaged. That agility, that kind of agility, is what is needed for us to continue to function in this. VUCA environment. I'm going to show you a quick video clip. This is a video clip of an aircraft that's coming into land. And you will notice there's a lot of crosswind as it's coming into land. And the pilot has to make some decisions. Now, of course, the pilot is trained to fly. Imagine that the pilot is like a member of a lean team in an organization, it has already been trained to do certain things. But the crosswind is something that shows up only when he's coming into land. What will the pilot do at that time? So take a look at this quick video, just a few seconds. So as the pilot comes into land, you'll notice that the nose of the plane is pointing away from the runway. And right before he lands, the pilot, what is called, kicks the rudder and changes direction right after touchdown. That kind of last minute change is possible because the pilot has the authority to do it, has been trained to be flexible in environments like these, and knows the necessity of making that decision at that time. That is how many of our staff, when we're in contact with a customer or when we're trying to fulfill a customer need and we discover something which is very different from the norm and we need to make a decision at that time, we will need to then have that kind of empowerment. We will need to know how to make a decision at that time and we will need to understand the necessity of making that decision timely. That agility that you see here being shown by the pilot, the same agility needs to be shown by us, the employees of the company. That is what it means for an organization to be flexible. And that flexibility comes in through this concept of lean. Lean is uh, actually, as you uh, talk to you about it in a minute, the history of lean is more than 100 years. People have been talking about making organizations lean for over 100 years. But it's not just about removing waste. It's also about being flexible because you add more value to a customer if you are more flexible. And that flexibility helps you ensure that you are addressing the need of the customer when it needs to be addressed. So notice the five principles of lean. The first one is you define value. What does it mean to have value? What does value mean? And generally we ask three questions. First of all, what does the customer consider important? The second question is, and it's a good idea to note these questions down by the way, they're very valuable. So the first one is, does the customer consider something important? If yes, it might be valuable, but wait, there's a second question. Does that step, that activity that the company does, does it involve some kind of physical change? Working on a spreadsheet, if you make changes to the spreadsheet, yes, that is a physical change. But signing a document just for approval may or may not necessarily be a physical change. Okay, so this is the second question. The third question that we ask is, is it being done right the first time it is done? 
If the answer to all three questions is yes, then that activity is valuable. It is adding value. So that's the first question that we ask. The second thing that we do in Lean is we map the value stream. So if this step is adding value, sure, but what about the other activities that we do in the organization? Which ones add value, which ones don't? The third step that we do is we create a flow, which means from step to step, the effort that is being put in, the ingredients that are going in, all of those ingredients, all of those efforts are in a smooth flow. The fourth step is that we establish pull. Establish pull basically means we shouldn't be doing work that no one is going to buy or pay for. We should only do things that someone has asked us to do. And the entire organization should be working like that. We call that pull. And the fifth step, as you see, is pursue perfection, which means, yeah, sure, that's how we do it today, but how can we do it better? This used to be, and this is the history of Lean that I was talking to you about, it used to be the responsibility of a small team. We used to call it the Lean team back in the day. That small team was designated by the company to go look at a certain department and figure out what could potentially be done better. What new things could the organization do? It used to be a small team that used to do that, maybe one to 2% of the people in the organization. But we've discovered over the last 15 years that things have changed so much and there's so many new changes coming up every day, it's not possible for a small team to do it for the entire company. In fact, the entire company has to do it. It is not the job of one small team. It's the job of every employee in the organization. It does not matter what department of the organization you work for. It does not matter what kind of work you do. What is important is that you recognize that you are a member of a lean team. And your team will have to take this responsibility to help make the organization agile. You could be from finance, you could be from marketing, you could be from sales, you could be from operations, from manufacturing, from HR, it does not matter. What matters is that you recognize your role in helping your organization become more agile, more flexible, helping your organization deal with the challenges that this VUCA world presents us with. And we have many tools available for this. And that's the last thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about today. There are many tools that are available for this. These are frameworks. These are techniques. These are tools that help us make the organization more agile and more lean. And I've divided these two tools up in the form of a quad. On the bottom axis, you see I'm talking about whether you're building something new in the company and what tools would you use for that. That's the column on the right. And on the left-hand side column, are you improving something that's already happen happening? That's the left column. Okay, and then in terms of roles, is it data-driven work? That's the bottom row. And is it experience-driven work? That's the top row. And now let's talk briefly about the tools. So you see in here, I'm talking about design thinking. Design thinking is a tool for implementing Lean. Design thinking is typically about building something new from scratch, and it is experience-driven. It's not a data-driven kind of thing. It's experience-driven. I'm not going to go into detail uh, in uh, design thinking, but I will tell you a little bit more in a minute. Uh, similarly, you see um, Agile, which is about building something new, but it is data-driven. So that's the one you see in the bottom box, bottom right-hand side. The left-hand side, improving something that's existing, that's already there, and is data-driven, that's Lean Six Sigma. So that's Lean coupled with Six Sigma. And, and the left-hand side at the top, experience-driven, but improving existing, that's Lean Enterprise. And then you see the word cap in both. So experience-driven, improving existing, and experience-driven, building new. Cap in both. Cap is about change management. It's about influencing people to accept the new things that you're bringing to the organization. It's about managing change because that's not something that happens naturally. So CAP is also a part of these tools that a lean team needs to know. Lean teams are, once again, all teams in the organization that, that recognize their role in helping the organization become more agile. And the tools available to them are, let's go through them one by one. First of all, let's talk briefly about Agile. Some of you might be familiar with it. In case you're not, Agile is a methodology for developing products in an iterative manner. 
generally used in the software industry, but not exclusively. Now it's increasingly being used in hardware. I've actually seen people use it in HR and marketing as well. It's a methodology for building products in an iterative manner. So you will notice the first iteration here is sprint one, then there's sprint two, sprint three. Do not assume that you are going to build it perfectly the first time around. You will have to make improvements. So why not make something that you can put in the hands of a customer and let them try it out? And if they don't like something, they can tell you. So you make it enough to enough of a level of completion that they try it out. That's sprint one. You get their feedback, then you make changes and make further improvements as sprint two, and then again, sprint three. This iterative manner of development in the end helps you make things faster, better, and helps satisfy your customers better. That's agile very briefly. Of course, there's more detail to it, and I'd be happy to go, uh, go into that if that shows up in the Q&A. The second uh, set of tools is Lean Six Sigma. Uh, and I'm, again, not going to go into detail, but the two things being addressed here. The Lean part of it addresses value. The variation part of it uh, is the Six Sigma piece of it. So value, as I mentioned earlier, is about doing things that the customer really is willing to pay for. Variation is about ensuring that the customer is satisfied every single time. And of course, there's a lot of statistics behind Lean Six Sigma. And there's the DMAIC methodology. If somebody goes deep into Six Sigma, then we can talk more about that. So this is the second tool, again, within the umbrella of Lean, within the umbrella of making the organization uh, more agile and your business agility. The third tool here is design thinking. And design thinking is an experiential kind of a framework for developing something from scratch. It is iterative, just like Agile, but in this case, the iteration is in terms of understanding what the customer experiences or feels. So you find out from the customer what they might want to do, what, what they might desire. And whatever they might desire, you try to make some kind of a prototype. So the top right, I'm starting from ideate. You generate ideas for how you might address the customer's need. Then go bottom, uh, bottom right, prototype. You prototype, you try something, you build something. The prototype itself may not necessarily be something uh, very well defined. So one example is I was doing some design thinking work for an organization here and uh, they wanted something built for people who jump off of planes with a parachute and they wanted, um, they wanted this device to help them navigate while they were mid-flight. And initially the thinking was they were going to put it on the arm, but I said, let's build a prototype. So they made a prototype out of cardboard. And I asked them to bring somebody, you know, a skydiver and, and put it on the person's arm and ask the person what it would look like uh, for them to navigate using that device. So the person, he kind of put his arms up and he looked around and he said, okay, this, the display is on my arm, but when I'm in the air, I'm trying to control my parachute. It's not possible for me to look like this towards the display and get adequate information. You guys need to come up with something else. So that first prototype didn't work out, which means they had to go back to the drawing board and make a new one. And they made a new one and eventually they came up with a product that works really well. My point is if they had built the final product, assuming that the customer would have liked it, it would have been a very expensive undertaking in terms of money, resources, and time. That's how prototyping works. And that's the, the testing pieces when you show it to the customer. After that, the customer might like it, may not like it. You empathize with the customer. Okay, you know, what, what, what don't you like about it? Talk to me about it. The customer tells you. And then based on that, you redefine the problem. And it goes in an iterative manner in this figure of eight until you're able to develop something that the customer really enjoys. So that's design thinking. Once again, I can go into more detail if you want afterwards. And the last thing that I'm going to talk to you guys about here in terms of tools is CAP. So CAP stands for Change Acceleration Process. And my apologies, I should have typed that up here. Change Acceleration Process. And it's, a, it's an approach for helping people uh, buy into your ideas. You're making a change to the organization. Your organization has been functioning in a certain way for a while. But it is necessary for you for the organization to reorient itself 
to become more agile, to become more lean, to change its processes, systems. And that change will create resistance because every time you change something, people are used to doing a certain way of, uh, of doing work. And when, you, when you're gonna force them to change, there will be resistance. How do you overcome that resistance? In fact, not overcome. How do you preempt that resistance and prevent it from showing up? How do you get people to buy into your idea? That's CAP. So CAP, and again, I, I can go into more detail afterwards if you guys want, but CAP is a tool that you will be using regardless of what you're doing as a lean team. You are transforming your organization. You're playing that transformative role. And CAP provides an approach for transformation. It's almost like a process for transformation. And it has proven to work. It has been used by organizations since 1992 very, very successfully. So these are some of the techniques, and I'm going to review them with you very quickly. So first of all, we started talking about lean overall. And within the, the umbrella of lean, we talked about agile. We talked about lean Six Sigma. We also talked about design thinking. And we talked about CAP. These are the different tools that lean teams have available. Now, the, the closing point on lean teams is that you guys will be thinking about how your role in your own organization, I mean, who gives you the authority to make these changes? Who gives you the opportunity to really have an impact on the organization at that level? How will you even be able to do that? So notice that I talked about, notice that I talked about CAP here. Sometimes you need to get the buy-in of your bosses. Sometimes you need to get the buy-in of your colleagues. At other times, you need to get the buy-in of your customers. Whatever the nature of the buy-in is, you need to start thinking of your role as the savior of your organization. Once again, uh, my colleagues, I started this discussion with talking about VUCA, volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous environment, which is changing on a daily basis. We cannot continue doing business the way we've been doing up until now. Something needs to change. The most important thing that will need to change is your understanding of your own role. It used to be that we would designate a the organization and give them the responsibility to make improvements, but that cannot be done anymore. We all have to play that role. We will all have to be running lean teams or be part of lean teams. And with that, I will end my, uh, my part of the conversation and I will now pause in case there are questions. If there are any questions, please type them in the chat window and um, I will address them.